Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I wanted to make a quick uh, video response uh, to the three-part series on uh, making a uh, custom Kydex holster. Um, I didn't make that video that long ago, but there have been some developments that are significant and many people will find helpful in terms of generating something that's more refined in terms of uh, holster creation. Now let me grab this guy out of the, out of the graveyard. Now, when I made that holster, it was something that was more, it was this guy. Now as you can see, there are things like edge fitment and uh, rivet placement and just the overall quality of it that is a big difference between that guy and this guy. So you see, I mean, obviously, I mean, it's, it's immediately apparent the, the, the fit and finishes much better and the rivet placement is more sophisticated and the uh, belt loop system is much better. So how do you get from there to there, right? How do you save yourself some time? Now, a couple things that are uh, important are, well I guess I'll just, uh, I'll start from the very beginning. That is getting your first piece of Kydex. Um, so take into account how much um, curve you want in your holster. Um, I like a lot so I can get them very uh, form fitting. So for a smaller gun like this guy I would cut out like a, a 7x7 or 6x7 or 6x or a 6x6 square um, or rectangle. Uh, I'd cut out two of them. This small. I'm not concerned with you know leaving myself a big margin of error anymore or you know a lot of room for trimming and tweaking so cut it out nice and tidy and cut them out identically so you start with uh, two identical pieces and then what you do is what I do is I determine the cant that I want so you could do it like that or you could do it like this let's say we're doing it vertically and then you trace onto the inner face the inner shiny side uh, the position of the gun after which you see how if I were to mold this as it sits right here Right, this grip is going to be really substantial. And when I put it in the press, I'm not going to get a really contour-hugging trigger guard area like this, like that there, if the plastic has to contend with this grip. So what I do is I trace this out here, trace that there, and then trace it over there like that. And then I'm actually going to cut this whole section out before I even put it in the press. And then of course since the opposite face is going to need to have the same piece cut out, I would uh, you know, flip the gun over and trace the mirror image onto the other piece. It'll, it'll make sense when you do it. It makes less sense when I explain it. So I would cut that out and then sand off the burrs. And then what I do is I heat it up and instead of putting the gun in the press and draping the kydex over it, I've, uh, I put the kydex face down in the press, put the gun on top of it, and then press it down together. And when it comes time to do the second face, what I do is I put the second face face down and then the gun and this piece of Kydex molded to the gun go in on top of it. And I do that in order to match up the two pieces in the press and I'm careful to make sure they don't shift when I press it down so that I have two pieces that are as close to each other as possible to reduce the amount of trimming and shaping necessary. Um, once they're all, once, once both pieces come out. So then what I do is I take one face, whichever one I want to start with, and then I, at that point, make my belt loops. Um, because I'm still generating a certain amount of consistency in the belt loops. So I form them for my belt, which is one and a half inches. So I make the belt loops, and then I use the belt loop to measure the, um, basic rivet placement, right? I know I need two rivets for the belt loop, so I determine where they're going to go based on the, the size of the belt loop, sketch them out, and then say, okay, well, if I need to put one here and one here because I've got an inch and a half belt, that means I can cut this like that. Or what I do is for the flush cut muzzle, on the opposite face, I trace over the muzzle, and then I draw the, draw the lines. Uh, for where I want the the planes to break like that, for, for where I want this angle to come in. So I'll draw those lines, and then I'll cut them with a uh, 
razor blade and break it off nice and clean. Um, and then for the muzzle, I'll, for the flush, flush cut muzzle, I'll cut it with a scroll saw. And then I'll uh, trace out this contour that I want and then cut that with a scroll saw as well. So then I have one side that is the shape that I want. So then I basically just trace that onto the other piece of kydex um, and then cut it identically. And then I sand. Um, if, you, there's like, if there's like an eighth of an inch difference between the two sheets, um, something like a hundred grit sandpaper, if you work it, will take that down so you don't have to worry about trimming it or like cutting it with that saw and then you've got this little jagged edge to contend with. You can just work that plastic down with the uh, sandpaper. So anyway, um, then I rivet the two pieces together. Once I've got all my sanding done, I, I start with a hundred, then do two hundred, and then do um, uh, 400 or 600, which, whichever I have handy. So I get a, so I can get a much finer, much finer edge. So then I rub the two pieces together once they're all sanded up. And of course, once you're done sanding, it's imperative that you rinse, wash off the kydex and dry it off because you don't want those particles getting in there with the gun. So got my rivets in place. And at that point, the, the holster is flat. So how do I get this uniform curve in the side? I don't do that by hand. Oh, excuse me. I don't do that by hand at all. What I do is, here's just a little example I have set up here. I take uh, one of these clamps, take a level or a straight edge or what have you, something along that, those lines. I clamp the kydex in there and then I heat it with a heat gun on both sides and then woo, bend it down. So, um, and then I let it set. Uh, what you can do, what, another good piece of advice, if you want something to set in a hurry, you know those cans of like compressed uh, keyboard dusting air? You know how they freeze the shit out of you if you flip them over? Well, you can do that with a Kydex. Um, if you don't want to, for this process, to get two layers of Kydex nice and hot, uh, uh, nice and flexible together at the same time, you have to get them pretty hot, but then you do really want to sit around and wait for it to cool. Um, no, you can just take your can of keyboard air flip it over so it uh, does the uh, frosty blast trick and just freeze it and then move on to the next side. That's in fact how I do these little um, these little belt loops here. I uh, Focus please. I'll uh, heat it up with the heat gun, fold it over and then just give it that uh, icy blast so I don't have to sit here. I mean who wants to spend time a lot of time on these belt loops? You want to get them done, right? I mean it's nice to do a lot of craftsmanship, but there's some stuff you, you just want to get it over with. You don't want to sit and wait for it to cool off, so you're not going to shock it, you're not going to damage it. You can just use like compressed air or uh, flip it over and use the propellant or the uh, liquid in there to uh, freeze it up. So anyway, this, this is a, an example of the rig that I use to get this uniform fold in it, uh, cut your pieces ahead of time, get them nice and tidy, and then uh, Measure your uh, belt loops for your rivet placement before you make any permanent cuts and make sure that you cut out this clearance for the grip in the plastic before you put it in the press. And press it face down. That way it's not going to move around on you as much. Um, so those are the uh, tips and tricks that I've learned. Oh, also, you see how there's not a lot of definition in the, in the ejection port there? On a 1911, and on a lot of other guns, that's a great place for the gun to get hung up. I mean, it's a good point of retention, but it's really easy for that to get pressed in and then the gun starts to gouge that plastic out there. I don't rely on that for my point of retention, and I, in fact, come back with the heat gun and reduce that a little bit. But I do accentuate the trigger guard. Um, the trigger guard definition is a good point of retention because it doesn't gouge, it doesn't get hung up. It, uh, it holsters and draws relatively quickly, even if you make that nice and tight. But the trigger guard, but the um, ejection port rather, if the gun isn't at a perfect angle coming out of the holster, it can really like wedge itself in there. So do yourself a favor, reduce the definition on the ejection port and increase it on the trigger guard for really good retention. But at any rate, yeah, so measure it out before you uh, put it in the press, cut it down 
to a nice size. First of all, it saves you material, and second of all, it's um, more precise when you work with it. And then uh, come up with a little rig to uh, give yourself a nice consistent fold if that's something that you want to incorporate in your design. Anyway, these are some factors that I found were important in making the transition from this gnarly guy, which, you know, at the time wasn't that bad, but I mean, like, look, look how that edge, look how, look how crappy that edge is. I mean, it doesn't even, like, line up really good, and the rivets are all over the place, and compared to this guy, that's only a couple weeks later. Focus. Man, those those edges and this finish is vastly superior. It's like a it's like a light year in difference. But anyway, those are the finer points that I had not uh, really uh, developed when I made that first video. So I hope this uh, update helps you, and I really encourage you to uh, put these uh, points into practice. So good luck.